Hey, it's Marcus from Holosuite. This video is a little bit different to usual because last week I ran my very first webinar on composing generative ambient music using Ableton Live 12 that I did in collaboration with sound designer Luca Beatovic. This video today is an excerpt from the Q&A section, which I've put up as a little bit of a teaser because I'm also going to offer a recording of the webinar on my website. So this is for anyone who might be interested in learning more about that. So Luca created a song from scratch for the webinar. And then the webinar itself was a few 50 minute deep dive track by track of the song that he made. He went through his compositional choices and his workflow, discussed how he creates evolving patches using Ableton's MIDI effects section and showed some tips on how to get great sounds out of Operator. Even I got a lot out of this. Luca uses a lot of features from Ableton Live 12 that I didn't even know existed. You can grab a copy of the webinar along with the full Ableton project on my website for just $5 US. You'll find a link to that in the description. If you own Live 12 and you haven't tested out the new features yet, this is probably a great way to get your feet wet. And if you're just starting out with ambient music and you want to learn a simple and effective way to create evolving MIDI, you will love this. I'll also include a link to a playlist with Luca's other tutorials that he's got up on his YouTube page, which are all fantastic. All right, that's me done. On to the video. Thanks for that. Thanks for that, Luca. No worries. That was, uh, that was Cool. It was very creative. I liked, um, there's, I definitely learned a lot from that. There's a lot to pick out from that. Like, um, I guess the things that come to mind, first of all, like I thought the operator sound design was really good. And I always overlook operator maybe because it's like one of the older, well, it's the oldest instruments yeah, in Ableton. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and, but I just like, they were doing like a 20th anniversary. They did a blog post on that. And Robert Henke like wrote about it a little bit and, and offered a sound pack of, of stuff and it's made me think oh yeah i should go back to that and try it out some more i know a lot of artists i like use like digitone and other fm synths and i mm, i yeah. uh, i never gravitated towards it but i should give it another look it's it's so rudimentary but it's it's you know i guess it's it's not that it gets a bad rap but it's overlooked you know but it's like yeah. its capabilities are are, are insane like I've, I've never actually used it. I use it as a base and I use it for its noise all the time, yeah, but I yeah, barely yeah. ever use it for anything else. Um, yeah. But just those two things alone, like in the track that I'm just working on today, I added it just this kind of like low rumble, just like, just turn, like added it like that looping noise and then dropped it all the way down to the bottom and then like filtered it really hard and it just sits there. Like it's, it's always around in my tracks, but yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's well, got a few like things that are, thing. yeah it's got a few things that are kind of distinctive about it, the looping noise being one and like the looping envelopes the way it does that it's a little bit different so that's mm -hmm. cool yeah um, there's a guy there's yeah. a guy that i follow named julian earl who does his um oh, yeah. you know this guy yeah I, I used to subscribe to him but i uh i haven't watched in a while yeah he's a he's a, a, a very interesting fellow but he um he uses it uh as like percussion right like he he just um mm. like he just gates it and and uh and adds um like envelope to it and then uses it like hi-hats and stuff like that so it's incredible what the kinds of things that you can do with it mm. yeah cool i also really like the uh technique of routing midi between lots of different channels like that it was interesting to see how little how few MIDI clips there actually were in the project and it, because you were reusing it and then putting it through different effects, to, MIDI effects to get variety. But, and MIDI effects are something else that I've probably overlooked too much other than the arpeggiator. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I really liked that. So I, I think that's something I'll try to do some more too. One of the one of the ways that I'm hoping to use Ableton, particularly with version 12, with the hardware more is by doing more MIDI sequencing from Ableton to the hardware because I haven't really found a hardware sequencer that I love, but Ableton right, is right. just so powerful. It's too um, powerful. It's, it's yeah. just, it's, sometimes it's just too much. It's like you can do everything and it's, it's sometimes almost, you know. Yeah, well, you made a good point at the end about having to like find ways to limit yourself in order to get anything done. And I, I definitely yeah. feel that too. I like yeah. also the technique where like, it seems like you did a lot of duplicating a track and then modifying stuff. Um, that mm. seems like, you know, another thing that I probably have overlooked. And so I just give myself a blank track and then get overwhelmed with the options. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. The one, the one thing that I didn't see using the Luca, which I really like doing is to like resample MIDI. So like once I've, um, 
once I've recorded a track, I'll flatten it. And then I will like resample, like try and, uh, I think is it slice to a new track or add MIDI to a new track. So it'll like guess what the notes are and then oh, yeah. Yeah, add it yeah. to a new track. And it often makes mistakes, which allows yeah, you to yeah. get a new variation of what you've just done. Yes, 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 absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah that's and you can cool. just drop Especially... in whole songs and I get it to just like guess what this, yes. <laughs> what's happening in the song. Yeah. And then it comes up with all kinds of crazy stuff. Yes, yeah, I actually I have. Um, I'm sorry. Um, I actually have um, okay. another Hiroshi Oshimura track that I like released that I did absolutely that that you just said right now, Marcus. Like, oh really? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one moment. Yeah. Um, I literally made um, I made a pack for um, pigments. Maybe if you use it. Yep. Uh, and so I I took a Hiroshi Oshimura track and i literally chugged in the whole um just and, and got false midi information but i quantized it to the um to the to a scale and just messed around with the patch and recorded it and, and it ended up being this so it's it's really that yeah. how do you right, decide cool. um when to to stop both with like adding layers and the duration of the song oh, oh <laughs> um I don't know. I mean, with this one, I feel that it was more structured and streamlined, and I, um, I kind of, it was. Um, I mean, for this one, it was a matter of okay, is it's a like it's a themed thing, so it's like a Hiroshi Shimura thing. I didn't want to use use um, um, like time based effects. I wanted it to be like clean MIDI stuff and whatever, and like I limited myself in that sense, but um. In terms of like knowing when a thing is done and whatever, I have no idea. Like it's okay. it's really a matter of of tinkering and and uh, yeah. I deadlines. Guess hopefully, feel. too, right? Everybody deadlines. says that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Deadlines and feel like yeah. you know, yeah. a matter of feeling feeling the thing, right? Look, how long did it take you to? Do you remember how long it took you to write this track? Uh, two days. Two days. Okay. This, and this do you tend to mix as you go or do it as a separate yeah. process? Well, for this one, it was like a matter of I, I mixed it as, as it went. But, you know, I have, I mean, right now I'm, I'm working on music that I've been working on for like iterations for like three years, right? So it's not mm -hmm. like, you know, I have stuff that I chug out, you know, fast and I have things that I let, like, let sit. I let them sit and I revisit them, but I try not to be, you know, too hard on myself with, with those things, right? Uh, what else have I got in my... Uh, oh, um, where did you start making... So the order of the tracks that you have in here, did you... Is that the order in which you added the tracks? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so it started with that kind of main yeah. arpeggiator. Yeah. yeah, just like, you know, as, as it goes in, like, the creative process, I just went, you know, tried to... Okay, this is interesting. Let's build on that. This is interesting. Let's build on that. And then once I had a thing, I th thought about sections. I went about like a thing that I like to like do now is like I'll, I'll take like a video or something that's very interesting to me and I'll like loop it and I'll watch it as I'm working as it kind of mm -hmm. dissociates me and like distracts me, but it kind of makes the whole decision making process and, and like with making music it kind of makes it interesting and with this i went with some form of like aquatic soundscape like uh like landscapes or something and it it's really and it kind of probably subconsciously made me um implement that in the music right which is interesting it's really like in, i i i'm just like scro scrolling through instagram right and 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 finding stuff you know it just makes it like it gives an additional layer of like randomness, I guess. Yeah, I've noticed that. Like, you do. I think some of your tutorial videos, you actually include the videos that you're watching as you're doing. Yeah, the music, yeah, right? yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's just like to kind of make myself not too much in the zone, you know, just like to distract myself and, and mm. work on, on my on my stuff. All right, that's all. Thank you so much for watching. So if you are interested in grabbing a copy of this webinar, click the link in the description below. And maybe once you've created something new and wonderful using that Ableton Live template, you might want to check out these videos on how to mix and master them. Until next time, keep making music. Cheers.